you. Thanks, darling. You're welcome. Hi, friends. Host Eric here. Host Talking with French People. And tonight, Rachel and I are asking the highly provocative question. ESFPs. Something wrong with them? Unfortunately, the answer is yes. <laughs> there does appear to be something wrong with the ESFPs. So, I have to ask you. Have you had much experience with ESFPs before starting the channel? I would say no. I think the thing is, ESFPs and I naturally repel each other so much that I hadn't really encountered very many of them in the world, or I'd just be like, what? <laughs> you know, this, this yeah. person must be insane or something. <laughs> um, hi, Leaf Drummer. Hi, Lauren Cuthbert. It's 1 a.m., so I'll only be a minute. Does that mean it takes you less time to get ready for to participate in a live stream at 1 a.m.? It only takes you a minute. Hey, I uh, just finished watching that typing sesh. Whoa. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, that's what prompted this, this video title here. And, you know, Ashadeep. Uh, Cloud, that guy yesterday, um, Marty, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, 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 the crazy ESFP kind of oblivion to, uh, to reality, you know, the, the persistence that they, that they are going to ignore all facts, reason, and, and legitimacy, you know? It, it's it's stunning sometimes. Uh, that that typing session yesterday, or whenever it was, with um, Argus Facts, I could tell right away um, It's like, okay, there's this antagonism to everything I'm doing, right? That, that's the thing about the ESFPs. They seem to have a genuine, deep-seated antagonism to everything I'm doing that precedes our interaction. Uh, purportedly, that guy actually deep hated me before he ever got me to type it. Um this guy I typed yesterday, uh, Argus Facts, or the day before, whatever it was. Um, so right off the bat, the sort of antagonism and bristliness, you know? Yeah. The thing I would say about ESFPs, is they have a tendency to make vague threats of the sort that you've messed with the wrong guy kind oh, of thing. Yes! And I, I'm not quite sure what they mean. Um... They don't know how to live in a world where I think, you know, the ability to punch somebody in the face at a moment's notice isn't rewarded at all. It's it's kind of tragic. If you think about it, like the lockdown and everything. Ashley Deep hating you before you typed him as BS. He obviously showed no antagonism. I mean, I don't know. I heard that prior to him getting me to type type me at all in conversations with other parties that he had expressed a great deal of disdain for me. I, I'm not saying he displayed it in... Uh, I'm not saying he displayed it in that typing necessarily, Sky Gear, but... Um, That's what I've heard from other people. It's secondhand, but, you know. So, recently I just got back from the pet store where um, well, yeah, that's certainly possible, Lauren Cuthbert. In the same way that uh, ESFP is my trigger type, 
Um, I suspect that ESTP will be the ENFP's trigger type. Hi, Boo Kirsch. This smells good. Ready for uh, rolling into a joint all crumbled up. This is the nice surprise. I figured we'd roll a joint. Why not? Yeah, exactly. Why not? You're good at it. You're pretty triggered by type 8, let alone an ESTP. I mean, I think the different type, I think the different 8s, depending on how, what type they are, play out a little bit differently. I wonder if you'd be triggered by my dad, Lauren Cuthbert. <laughs> He's definitely an 8, but you know, it depends what mood you catch him in. Totally based on what kind of movies you catch him in. <laughs> <laughs> Last night we had a very pleasant dinner with with my dad. Yes, it was very pleasant. We talked about politics some, and well, you know, my dad likes to talk about politics. Yeah. And I like to talk about politics with my dad because he knows a lot about him. You know. Mm -hmm. The thing about ESFP conflict with ENTP is that it almost lacks verisimilitude. Verisimilitude being believability in fiction or narrative. I We've encountered that. Uh, he was an ESFP up to place 48. He's another ESFP who thought he was an INFJ, you know. The thing that makes him kind of lack... Uh, Black Burris Militude is the same thing that we've encountered around here. When ESFPs come around, uh, at first, I'll typically think uh, that um, that they're, they're cloud or they're trolling or something. <laughs> it takes me a while to realize, no, this is seriously how they are. Yeah. Uh, Did I do that? What? We just slip back. Okay. Hi, everyone. It's like if you were to. Write a character like Asha Deep or. Argus Facts. They'd be hard to carry as a character because. It doesn't make any sense, right? It's like there's no justification for it. There's no there's no backstory that explains why they're this way. They're just born this way. Mm -hmm. You pew to you as well of yourself. It's a little, it's a little tight hitting, you know. So that's a great question. What's an example of a healthy ESFP? <coughs> um, that's a tough question to answer. It's like, because in this context, we're almost never going to encounter an ESFP who's behaving appropriately, you know, who's who's acting like a healthy human being would in this context, because the context is so um, aggressive against them, I guess. So, yeah, I have an, a cousin who's an ESFP. She is 18 now, I, th I believe. Um, and ever since she was little, my whole family has been like, oh my gosh, Leah, oh, that Leah, oh my gosh. I didn't see it the same way because I didn't. I was paying attention really, but um, it's because she's ESFP. Um, I'm sure there are. What 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 Octavia Silva says is absolutely correct. The example of a healthy ESFP is every anime protagonist ever. Mm -hmm. Um. She didn't say anime. She specified a kind of anime because she's a little bit more 
of a weebaku, weebaboo weeba than I am. <laughs> weeaboo, is that how it's called? Weeaboo? Yeah. Yes, the peas su survive well and they are healthy in anime. You know, maybe Tom Brady. <coughs> um, that, that, that's, that's debatable because remember that whole scandal with him and uh, uh, Ben Affleck and the girl who had all those rings on her finger? I, he just, I don't think he's faithful. That's personal life. But but we are talking ESFPs. Okay, I just landed here and only have a little time. Can you all tell me what point he's trying to make and reassure me this isn't clickbait? Um, no, the well, point I'm trying to make is that when I encounter uh, ESFPs, typically, they behave so shockingly in contradiction to what I would consider social norms under this con in this context, which is a very abstract context, naturally, okay. that it makes me check my basic my basic channel motto, which is there's nothing wrong with you. That in general, most people in the world are telling you there's something wrong with you when very few people in the world are telling you that there's nothing wrong with you. No, it's... For me, it's a roller coaster with ESFPs. So I was telling um, Eric about my friend Anna, and when I had a manic episode while I was friends with her, she called me every day on the phone, and she was one of the only per people who did. And so for that, I'm, like, really grateful because it was nice to have a friend when I was in such, like, a crappy situation. But I, I, it felt like... Like I told Eric, it felt like I was like her little like cute doll being dragged around everywhere. And for an INFJ to stand up for themselves just takes a lot. And they might smell it on an INFJ, you know, the fact that they don't really are, they can be very empathetic people, um, INFJs. And I think ESPs kind of take that as, oh, well, it's easy for me to like, you know, mold this person into what I want, and then when you don't go along with that, you're on their hate list. I mean, I kind of agree with what Lauren Cuthbert said there, where I have yet to meet an ESFP who didn't display BPD-like behaviors. Um, it depends what you mean by BPD-like, but uh, it, it seems as though there's a, there's a serious <laughs> like boundary issue here. Yes. Uh, why don't you put that rest cool. of the joint in your bong there? Thank you. Um, like, they really want to establish what the boundaries are for everyone, not just for themselves. And they don't yeah. necessarily respect anybody else's boundaries uh, if they aren't physical boundaries. They may, they may very well respect physical boundaries. That's the kind of thing that they don't get to display here, you know? There's a lot of things that happen in the real physical world that ESFPs don't have the opportunity to display or take advantage of because we're all stuck here on the external metaphysical field engaging via words. They want to engage too. They come here, they start talking with words, and unfortunately, the words aren't, they don't match their own, the words they have about themselves. So I think ESFPs definitively have the least objective self-concept. Um, by which I mean, they they just it's like they come in to get to to be typed by me or whatever, or they start a channel calling themselves INFJs, and uh, there is no making any headway talking with them, you know. He saw an ESFP panel channel yesterday. Oh, what do they claim to be? I'm sure they don't claim to be an ESFP. Interestingly, like nobody does, right?
So for somebody like me who's so map oriented and who's doing map oriented things, when I encounter ESFPs in this environment, they're just going to seem completely fucking crazy to me. You know, it's like unavoidable because, you know, no, their words, words mean nothing to them. And they because just, we get that vibe from you, that's when they start getting all like, like that's what, I'm doing an imitation of, what was it, what's his name, Argus, Ar, Argus Paths, yeah, he, when he started going, like, that's when I was like, all right, you're all in, aggressive. I found him, you know, Pushed back from the very get go. Like one of the earliest questions I asked him was, "How many uses can you think of for a bowling ball?" Yes. And he said, "Why?" Ooh, I'm trying to type you. <laughs> it's like he doesn't want to be typed. He wants to control that process. You know, he didn't like the kind of questions I was asking. Wanted me to ask him different questions that would allow allow him to display. Meow, meow, you know? Yeah. It made it clear that he and I approached it from such a fundamentally different angle of approach. Namely, that I thought I was there to, to help him objectively know his type. He thought I was there to, <coughs> to uh, play... <laughs> play catch to his <laughs> demonstrations of type, you know? The first thing that made me think of ESFP was uh, his flashy jacket. I know that's a strange thing, and please don't do this yourself. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't, I really, you can't really tell, like, Voltology's not well, something that I really trust him, but... I will say, I was like, ooh, he's got, like, he's dressed up for this. Like, <laughs> I did notice his gold, his gold, and... Uh, he didn't pay me. He didn't no, pay he me. did it for free. He he said, he first he offered to pay me in installments. And I said, well, you know, and then, then he said we could do it live. I said, well, if we're going to do it live, you don't have to pay me. And uh, I'm glad I said that because... <laughs> I don't want really <coughs> unhappy clients paying me, you know? <coughs> I won't say exactly satisfaction guaranteed, but I'm happier that it played out the way it did. Where you, you know, <coughs> if an ESFP wants me to type them as an INFJ, I don't necessarily feel any great satisfaction at getting their money <coughs> and being required to tell them, no, you are, you are not, you know. Oh, and Cuthbert, if you want to get typed live on a live stream, then I'd not be unwilling to do that, maybe. I, that's kind of an interesting thing to do. Most people don't like to get typed in that context because they get exposed, you know. Like Argus... Argus Fox had to be genuinely in denial, kind of, to think that that was going to play out any differently than it did. Akula, I am INTP. Congratulations. Um, I was going to mention something. Oh, well. FYI, the Endless Curtis also did a video about how ESFPs mistype NFJs. I've noticed a trend in my life. Like when I don't have any friends, an ESFP will come into my life. Like it's happened. Um, I'm probably total three occasions. Yeah, three occasions. I could definitely point out. Um, and it makes no sense to me, but it happens. And one of them was really good because, no, 
Lauren. Um, Rachel has a less negative of her attitude towards the ESPs than I do, naturally, because if if I'm right about there being sort of trigger types, ESP is my trigger type, not her trigger type. I have to poo. Okay. Um. So, like, for me, they come into my life when I don't have a lot of friends, which is attractive to me because at the time I'm looking for friends. So they're very outgoing and will make the first move and be like, oh, I love your bag. Or I get a lot of times for them, oh my God, you're so cute. And like, who doesn't like hearing a compliment? You know, like, especially like right away. I mean, don't get me wrong. Both times that it happened, um, like, oh my gosh, you're so cute. I was taken aback. Um, and then, you know, at one point I realized, oh my God, I like spent so much money at this like boutique and I'm not gonna wear like some of the stuff. <laughs> but um, like they, so like my roommate who's, who was an ESFP, who is an ESFP, um, but I don't live with her anymore. Uh, when I lived with her in college, it was fun because, like, I got to live on my own. So she gave me, like, she gave me the gift of friends. But as a friend, it was, it, they're, like, they test boundaries. Yeah, Bork Hirsch, it's like... They come along and they fill a void. Yeah, it just, and it always happens that way. Like, I remember, like, this was, like, years ago. Um, back in, like, 2016, maybe, I was just feeling, like, I guess a little adventurous. And then I go into the boutique in town new boutique town and I meet an ESFP who is like, I am going to change your life, you know, like that. And at the time I was so lonely, that, like I was like, hell yeah, you know, like sign me on for that. It ended up being like me hanging out with a bunch of like way older ladies, which like, I didn't care about that, you know, like, that part I didn't mind, but it wasn't, they, didn't really like the same things that I like. Like, they like to drink. And I don't like to drink. She didn't even drink herself, though. I don't know what we were doing. I guess, like, it was a scene, you know? I would go with them to scene. Places that were scenes. <clears throat> they do expect so much. Well, at least I felt like. I was being expected way too much of myself. Like, she, my friend Anna expected me to see her, like, every day. <laughs> Do you hang out with Boomers now? Octavia Silver? I hang out with Gen X because she was, or she, yeah, no. She was, she was, yeah, she's, I think, a little bit younger than Eric. She's, No. God, she, I know she's a dragon in Chinese astrology, but I don't know the year. So I'm gonna look it up. Year of dragon dates. Yeah, okay, so she was born in 64. So she's a boomer. Um, and so she introduced me to her friends. They were fun, I would hang out at the, the boutique and I would talk to people, but um, there was a time in my life that things at home were like really not going well and my parents didn't like her and like she would get fighty with them and then I would get in the middle of it and it would just be not fun anymore. And then I would tell her, you know, I really do want to hang out with you, but like just not today. And like that one rejection meant like dead to me, you know? Like, I can't, like, some days, I can't, some days I just want to hang out in bed. And that's the truth. That's the truth. So, you know, ESFPs don't really have a, a tolerance for that. 
they, uh, my roommate V, she had a tendency, she had a crush on my boyfriend and, uh, she had a tendency, even when he wasn't there, but when he was there, it would happen more. Like she had a tendency to like barge into my room when, um, she was like in her underwear and I would be like, yo, like, can you knock? But there was no knocking. <laughs> My Life with ESFPs, written by Rachel Apolosa, the INFJ. They do rope in INFJs, I will say. They, they do rope in. But it doesn't last long. And then the um, ESFP, like, you know, you're like dead to them, basically. There definitely are mature ESFPs. Um, Duels, 1969. Um, we, Eric had mentioned um, Tom Brady. And I think he's probably a mature ESFP. I think he, he lives, I think he lives, I mean, he has a supermodel girl, like girlfriend, wife. And he has, like, a, a kids and stuff. I think he's pretty fine. Which ESFP was the worst? <clears throat> or which type? What do you mean, um, Akula? I think of all my ESFP friends the same, to be honest with you. I think they were all pushy, uh, social butterflies who like you want to get on the wrong side of them what is the worst type i don't think there are i really don't i mean so like eric's trigger is esfp my trigger is istj i'm infj my trigger person is um, ISTJ, and I only have two, like maybe three um, ISTJs that I know of. Um, I worked with an ISTJ, and the way that she would trigger me is that more like, I felt like I triggered her a lot. Like she was very by the books at work and she was, she had her own section and she kept it nice and neat. She was in, and this is at Trader Joe's and she was in charge of um, like all the, uh, like the produce section with glass. So she, and cans and stuff and um, the, the spices. So she was in charge of that aisle and she kept it like spick and span. So like when I was in charge, she'd be like, okay, I don't want to talk to any of the people right now. Like you need to like, can you please like stack these and help the people? And I'm, I'm going to do my inventory. So I would say yes, but me being an INFJ, like people are always coming up to me. So I was like not able to like stack and like talk at the same time. And it really bugged her. And I was just like, yo, I'm doing my job. Like, I'm sorry that I'm not able to, you know, stack and talk at the same time, but I can't. And so, like, that's my ISTJ conflict. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. One of my uh, favorite... INFJ characters hmm. in anime is Kuroko Kuroko from from Kuroko's Basketball which I'm currently watching. Hmm. He's a good INFJ character. Which one is he? The main character the blue-haired kid. Oh, I like the blue-haired kid. Yeah. The first episode I watched, he was in the stands. He wasn't even playing. Spencer Jones says, my favorite INFJ is Jimmy Carter. Uh, he 
he might be an INFJ. He might be an ISFJ. I was thinking ISFJ. ESFJs are the only SJ types I can myself be around. Well, it is easier to... Uh, Um, but ESFPs, like, honestly, what is this title again? Why do they have so many problems? Uh, ESFPs, is something yeah. wrong with them? Question yeah, that? right. So, like, they're always in love, too. They're always in love. It's, like, so passionate. And yet, like, they're so blind to, like, what a good relationship actually looks like. It's so weird. Octavia, Octavia, let me retract and restate what I said before. To make an ESFP, ENTP relationship believable, you have to, you have to begin with the ESFP perspective and get the reader invested in the ESFP perspective, and then have the ENTP represent the person who's trying to tell, um, who's trying to tell the ESFP their limitations. Oh. And that's how they do it in anime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except usually it's an STP who's telling the SFP their limitations and who's learning their lesson. There aren't a lot of ENTPs in anime. Although I will say Regan from Mob Psycho 100 is probably my favorite. Hey, he's so good. And a very realistic ENTP as well. I like, like how he wears suits. Yeah, well, he also he also fucks up morally at some point during the thing. Like yeah, he, he, he he gets selfish and chooses the wrong thing. Oh, your ENTP is a main character. In that case, then you're gonna have to. Um, you're going to have to empower the ESFP with the capacity to, to, I mean, what you do is you, you get the ENTP flummoxed in a conversation by the ESFP's constant uh, redirections, you know, like the ENTP is trying to make a point and the ESFP is constantly like doing something clowny to make the, and to get everybody's attention off of the point, you know? Mm. Also, I was watching your Jack vid, and I think a lot of it applies to Curtis Connor. Who's Curtis Connor? I don't know who Curtis Connor is. Neither do I. I also don't know who Drew Gooden is. Same. I do, however, know how to pull... A therapy yes, he does. Oh my gosh, does he? So I'm going to do that right now. So I call therapeutic bomber. Right? Therapy for what? Shall I join? Yeah, sure. Of course. There are times when Eric's mom would hang and she would hand me the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> she could tell when I needed it. I appreciate that. Stop dropping weed on the floor. What song is that? It goes. I don't. I don't know because at this point it could be anything. Do you guys know I what I'm it's saying? It's a theme song. I think it seems like either a commercial song or a theme song or something. Yeah. <laughs> That's so good. Is that Full House? Okay. It's not, I thought it was Full House too, actually, Andre Z. Cool. See, the thing is, um, I've never watched Full House on purpose, but <laughs> Delilah had a period of her childhood Aww. when she thought Full House was the most hilarious television show ever created by mankind. And um, would like come out of a room just laughing so hard and try to explain something <laughs> funny that happened to me in Full House. <laughs> oh my God. I remember how shocked she was when I explained to her that, that, that they weren't currently making Full House. That, that was, those were reruns. And what? 
this is 10 years old. What? She couldn't, <laughs> she couldn't believe it. She was so disappointed. Oh, my God. <laughs> the sweetest thing. Like. I'm like, no, they're not, that, that's not now. I mean, they're not still making this right now. It is so cute. Because, <laughs> like, I think of some of their hairstyles, and it's so dated. Like... <laughs> I had a best friend, Vivian, who uh, was obsessed with the Olsen twins and the fact that uh, Uncle Jesse, John Stamos, is Greek. So she watched the show, and I would hang out with her, and we would watch it together. I always, I always thought it was a little too uh, icy, cake, thick ice cream cake, you know? Cream, oh, it's, just, it's too sweet for me. Way, way, way too sweet for me. <coughs> I mean, <coughs> it should just be first letter same, the next three letters flipped. So for ISFP, their stereotype would be INTJ. For INFJ, mm -hmm. their stereotype would be ISTP. My trigger? Oh, yeah, for socionics. Now I'm saying if if in fact it works like I'm saying ESFP is my trigger type, right? Uh -huh. The reason being they have the opposite kind of act. Well, I mean they have the opposite. They're exactly the same as me in terms of action, deliberation, uh, interface, knowledge, but they have the opposite ones of all of those. Okay, so uh, to say that your trigger type then would be Knowledge, interface, uh, deliberation, action, but the opposite of all of those. So in a, any four, it'll be ISTJ. My bad. ISTJ. Yeah, that's why I was telling my story about that's my little frustration with the ISTJ um, coworker I had at Trader Joe's. That I could feel the conflict with. I think what it works out to be is that for. Um, Extroverts, you flip the last three letters. For introverts, you flip the middle two. I think that's how it works out. Oh, no, no. For extroverts, you flip the middle two also, huh? P is the same for me. Yeah, that's right. My bad. Flip the middle two. Flip the middle two letters, and that'll get you your trigger type. Ah, so ENFP is... ESTP. ESTP. Trigger type. I'm learning so much. Being with you, I'm learning so much well, about my life. Well, thanks, darling. I'm learning a lot, too, you know. That's great. I always get along fine with guys at these. We don't... Seriously? We don't have really any common ground. <laughs> um, we don't really want to be friends with each other, but we always have very peaceful, cordial uh, relationships with each other. We don't seem to have problems with each other. I, I don't know. ESTPs and I can can butt heads, but typically we'll, we're on the same page. Yeah. Um, it's just written a little differently. ISFPs and I, it's like... Uh, I think the reason why ISFPs and ENTPs get along well is because while they share no conscious functions... They have all the same absolute values. So they trust the other person implicitly to not fuck up in the evil ways, basically. So. Because the same that I don't have conflict with ESTJs would be wrong. Like, I definitely have had the like, conflict with ESTJs. Well, they're your super writer type, right? No, they're my conflict. Oh, they're your conflictor type. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, I mean, I think you've had conflict with them. Like you've had conflict with, with your mom. Yeah. You haven't really had conflict with my dad. No, not really at all. You guys don't seem to run afoul of each other ever. No, we. It's. Like you said, very cordial. Like we very collegial. Yeah, like it, 
I just try to give him his space, and he seems to try to give me mine. It's very respectful. <laughs> well, I've never met any ESTJ like your dad, though, I have to say. I mean, yes, the, the he's intimidating, like, a lot of them, but, like, he's so funny and just, like, a very wholesome guy, really. And interesting, too. So interesting. My gosh, I love it when he, he asks the question, Who's your favorite mimi Yeah, I'm always like, I don't know. And he'll he'll have like a whole painted story of what happened. It's like amazing. Well, I mean the thing is, Octavia So says ENTP and ISFP are the two chillest types. Uh I <laughs> I may be an unusually chill ENTP. I'm not sure all ENTPs are quite this chill. No. Uh, I think there's a lot of ENTPs who are not very chill. Yes. I think that's more the case. I think Isaiah's pretty chill. Well, the other thing is, I think for, for Octavia Silva to declare me chill <laughs> requires her to, to have overall determined my person to be mm. chill, despite the ample examples of non-chillness that I provide. Oh, right? wow! Well. <laughs> Oh, that is so funny. Because it certainly is the case that I provide plenty of examples of not being chill. Eric is high is not a meaning. <laughs> that has nothing to do with whether nothing to do with whether I'm chill or not. Yeah, really. Unless I no, guess it really doesn't. I guess if I'm I'm feeny, you know. If, if I if I didn't have chill, any though, weed, I think that's... the weed helps chill me out somewhat. But it's uh, when you smoke as much weed as I do, it doesn't really do much to you. See, I agree. Uh, I agree, Octavia. So that's my take on it too. I consider myself a chill person, despite the fact that there's a video you could watch called "Host Eric Yells at People" that would be indicative <laughs> of me not actually being chill. <laughs> <laughs> um, you think Rachel makes me chill already too? Oh, that's so nice. I mean, the thing is, the key thing about Rachel is she's not the source of any stress in my life, and she is the source of you know comfort and uh, whatever the opposite of stress is. I don't know. What's so what's the opposite of stress? Soothingness. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Soothingness. Yeah, yeah. soothingness. You Is wouldn't it? want to meet Eric down a dark alley, that's no, for sure. No, you definitely <laughs> don't. I don't know why you wouldn't want to. Just because, I mean, I wouldn't want to be in a dark alley. <laughs> you're Unless there's some meet, reason to be in a dark alley. You're not going to meet him in a dark alley. He'll be, like, thinking, probably gagging at all the gross stuff that's there. If I did meet you in the dark alley, I'd probably be like, hey, why are we both <laughs> in this dark alley? <laughs> <laughs> You want to follow me and help? We can get out of this dark alley. <laughs> are, you, are you lost here too? I, I I don't know how I ended up in this dark alley. <laughs> it smells. It's like it smells like piss back here. It's, <laughs> it's true. That's the that's how you are more. You have an intimidating presence. <laughs> Stresslessness. I think the opposite of stressful is soothing. That's what I think. Or calming. I'm, see, I'm always worried that I'm a source of stress. I don't <laughs> want to see myself at a cabin on top of a hill with an axe in my hand either because it means I'm probably chopping wood, which, believe it or not, is quite a bit of work. If you've ever done it before, it is. It is some serious exercise. Exercise that I'm not in the mood for, especially since it's raining right now. Yeah, it is. You reminded me. I want to check something. Eric Oliver can joke around a great deal and be funny, but he doesn't have any top or second. People think those without be top or second can be creatively funny. Yeah, I agree with you. Oliver Linehan is funny and creative, and he's an ISFP. I mean, ISFJ. Sorry. He's an ISFJ. Uh, according to people's reactions, you're a big source of stress, James. Well, around here, I would not think that you're a big source of stress. Eric, what do you think of ENFPs? By and large, I like them. Uh, it's just when we argue politics that we have 
we run afoul of each other. I like ENFPs. We seem to be on the same page until suddenly we're on the exact opposite page, and then we're like, Rawr! Yeah, that's so true. As long as we're both in a friendly mood, ENFPs and I get along great. ENTPs are not intimidating at all. I find ENTPs great fun, really enjoy them. I mean, the thing is, I, I, uh, I would say um, that if you're intimidated by me, you probably fucked up. <laughs> you know, it's like I don't think I'm intimidating, but. Um, I think you could put yourself in a position where you have no choice but to be intimidated. You know? I haven't only read like two messages in this conversation, but I agree with ISFJ Drew Gooden. Who is Drew Gooden? <laughs> All these <laughs> names. Uh, that we both don't know. I don't know who that is either. What did they used to uh, chant to? Oh, that's right. I'm thinking of Daryl Strawberry. Former baseball player Daryl Strawberry. Mm -hmm. What about him? Well, when he would play in the outfield, the fans would chant, the, the opposing fans would chant, Daryl, Daryl, and there's an episode of The Simpsons where um, they show him standing in the outfield, and uh, and they they show him his face in the crowd behind him shouting Daryl, Daryl, and he <laughs> cries a single tear. And says, <laughs> they don't know how much it hurts. <laughs> Justice. <laughs> James the Drunk says, My ISFJ mother doesn't know how to use the Zoom app whatsoever. Absolutely helpless. Is she as helpless with the Zoom app as you are with the caps lock button? <laughs> <laughs> you missed it. What's wrong with ESFPs? What's wrong with ESFPs? Oh, what's not what's wrong, wrong with ESFPs? <laughs> Desert INTJ, you know the episode I'm referring to. Congratulations. Ah. Nina H poses a good question. Hi, Eric and Rachel. How do you differentiate between SI and SE inferior? Mm. That's how you differentiate between me and Rachel. Mm -hmm. And. Mm -hmm. oh! Honestly, they look very similar. But one of them's a knower and one of them's an actor. Mm -hmm. And so it's like Rachel will uh, naturally fall into the role of straight man <laughs> when she and I are riffing off of each other. Sometimes she'll interview me about stuff when mm -hmm. we're driving around and I make a joke, then she'll tend to interview me about it, you know. I love it. It's fun. And uh and what you see is if you put the two together, then one of them naturally takes on the role of the expert and the other the introvert. Now, regarding the question, can an ESFP be, can't become president? Yeah, we just had one. We just had one. How do you know if you're unconventional? First, learn all of the conventions. <laughs> okay. Then make sure that your behavior is never consistent with any of those conventions. And then... Only then will you truly know that you are unconventional. Unconventional. I'd also recommend don't attend any conventions. Right. Don't go to any convention centers. Um, don't convene with others. <laughs> As a general matter, of course. That's how it's going to go. I think, I think that's how you got to do it, Akula. Yes, Valerie, I would. I can. People I do not me. know, I've never heard of. Danny Gonzalez. Who, who is this person? I don't know. 
YouTube's not a good place to distinguish conventional because it's full of NT Annies. Around here is full of NT Annies. I mean, if you look at the typology community, what you see are people having varying degrees of uh, of success, right? Um, okay, David K. I'll tell you what. We won't smoke if you don't breathe. How about that? Are you sure breathing is good for you? I know it's good for me, but increasingly I'm doubting the, the proposition that it's good for you. Can't say. I disagree. Oh, good. Akula has a book on conventions. Hopefully, it's an unconventional book on conventions. If it is a conventional book on conventions, at least then you'll understand the conventions regarding books on conventions. You just always have the answers. Thanks. I do. Welcome. Breathing sucks. Too much SI. Good point, Seamus the Drunk. You know, just want to uh, once again mention that. <coughs> Don't smoke, it's bad for you. I'm David Kacha cha 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 cha. <laughs> is, that, is that your habit, David, going around telling other people what to do? <laughs> Giving health advice? What are you, the <laughs> Johnny Appleseed of random health advice? I learned that, was it who was it, you? That use your dominant hand for the like hi hats and stuff and drums so that you because it does the most stuff yeah yeah I thought that's so cool nothing is healthy unless taken in moderation right that's yes. why I'm a heavy smoker but only in moderation I'm a heavy smoker as well but we're both combined. It's, it's moderation because it's moderation between abstinence and heroin addiction. And yeah, and, and also, That's the middle ground. I only go by <laughs> um, esoteric ways, and the tarot always pulls out uh, temperance for us, so we don't have a problem. And the other thing is, I only smoke as much as I want to. I don't smoke more than I want to. Therefore, I'm smoking the right amount. I want to tell a story about the Hills episode where an ISTJ who gives, I think, fair chances to ESFPs. So the ISTJ tells the ESFP, I have a job for you at a clothing company. You go to school with me, that's fashion institution, you would be good for this job. Except the ISTJ doesn't know that the ESFP is not the person for that job. And she goes to the interview, they hire her because she's on the show, right? She like fucks everything up. <laughs> and I was like, see ISTJ? You didn't know, but now you know. But they're still friends. Hmm. David K. Yeah, come on, man. Really? Is this what you do with your time? <laughs> <laughs> you go around and tell us people to stop smoking. Just stop smoking. How, how often really does that work? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <clears throat> I guess I better stop. Stip smoking. Stip smoking. Stipple. Stipple. I currently don't stip smoke, so we should be fine. You know what I would recommend not smoking? Are cloves. Apparently cloves are really bad for you. I knew this mean girl who loved smoking cloves. <coughs> she was so mean. <coughs> I shared a sweet with her. So I associate 
cool mean girls with clothes. Um, Lauren Cuthbert, maybe. <coughs> yeah, my mom tells me to stop smoking too. Well, not good that did. Yeah, right. Well, I think Sky Gear. The point is, whether you treat the process as something that you need to be ordinal about. So, in other words, if you if you learn the techniques of TI through a TE methodology, you'll execute a series of steps to solve a problem. Whereas, if you have TI naturally, you'll just work through it in your head without really thinking about it. If cognitive functions exist, how come INTPs don't always use good TI? I mean, I think the correct answer to that is because they're TI DOMs, they generally know when not to use TI as well. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, I don't always use good NE because I don't overuse it. I'd say INTPs and INFPs both overuse it. In other words, I uh, my dad I see frequently. I, I note this situation where he's his third slot expert of intuition is trying to generate possibilities about something regarding we need variables a b and c to resolve as either yes or no before we can really ideate possibilities but he's trying to ideate possibilities too deep back like in other words he's going well if if a is yes and b and c are no then we should have this and then this then this is that that is too far back way too far back because it's like you're you're ideating before the circumstances really allow you to meaningfully ideate possibilities. So an, e, an any DOM understands that component better than an any tool user, just as I tend to overuse TI in that regard. Like there are circumstances when one shouldn't use TI, uh, especially about relationships, and I tend to use TI about relationships as well. Well, I'm being fair and I'm being a good relationship partner, so what could you possibly be complaining about? <laughs> Basically my my approach towards relationships. Um, if you have something legitimate to complain about, complain about it and I'll try to fix that behavior. And if you're a good person, you'll be satisfied when I do. And if you're a goalpost mover like my ESFJ ex-wife was, then you'll just set a new a new standard for me to meet, you know? Well, I shouldn't really be using TI in that context at all, right? Well, I overuse my FB, right? Yeah. You like I was explaining on um, on a comment I left how uh, being seven Enneagram INFJ, my FE depletes so quickly. Like, I, I overuse it. I think it's a very good description of yourself. Um, it's either going to be Countervalued NI in the INFP INTP or in the ESTJ ESFJ mode, it's going to be blind NI. In both those instances, it's excluding NI too much from the equation. If you're in any DOM, you naturally value and you know it's ignoring, but it's not. It's still very much a part of your your being in a positive way. Um, yes, Lauren Cuthbert. ENFP is TI polar. Point of least resistance. <laughs> Oliver Lyon asks an excellent question. If cognitive functions are real, then why is there a dick in my toaster? Well, the answer is because you attempted to make toast naked and accidentally it flopped in there, I'd recommend not pushing down the lever or you'll get toaster burns on your penis. That'd be my guess. That's just my intuition on the matter. Yeah. It could be someone else's dick in your toaster, in which case, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, uh. Maybe some other naked guy beat you to the toast making process? Um, or... If it's not attached to anybody, you've got real problems there, sir. Yeah. That's when you probably want to call the police. That's what I was thinking, too. 
Right. But excellent, excellent question. <laughs> or it's a dildo, right? Green system. You're right. Or it's a dildo. So we have three things that it could be. Uh, good luck with that. If I tell you you're a censor, you'll be shook. You might be, Lauren Cuthbert. Be be ready. I don't want you to cry. I'm going to be a... Uh... ESFP's got me out of, like, bad situations, too, honestly. I don't know. It's just, like... But, like, also bad fucking... I had an ESFP steal fucking money from me. Stupid fucking... See, this is what see seven four eight like seven eight four. It's like it takes you a little bit longer to get to be the the fuck yous. But the seven four is like ah, yay play, fuck you. <laughs> BRB has the kids. BRB has works the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Seamus. I am sorry that you are uh, drunkenly offended by the banal realities of of humanity. Mm -hmm. Eric, you, last time you didn't say anything about my new NI test. Let me write it up again. Okay. Is it how many beans does it take to make a burrito? The answer is it depends. Are you eating a bean burrito or a beans burrito? As far as I know, there's only one place that serves the beans burrito. Um, Rachel and I went there one time. I don't remember where it was, but I remember noting that on the menu, it offered the beans burrito. And what I concluded is that in all other restaurants, it must be the case they cut a single bean into many pieces for their burritos. Hence why they're called bean burritos. But at a place like I went that one time with Rachel, they used multiple beans. Right. I will now give you a popular universal phrase and take some words out. You have to fill them in. Well, let's test it out. Yeah. Um... So like you mean like <laughs> I see. So uh meow 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 to rise. Meow 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 like that. <laughs> What's that expression? Anybody else get that one? Did anybody get that one, Sky Gear? Did you get it? Meow, 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 rise. Meow, 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 meow. What's the answer? Willing to bed, ready to rise. Makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Oh, that's such an ISFJ thing to say. Okay, here, let's try another one. Uh... My grandma Pelosi used to say that all the time. All the time. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, doomed. Meow, 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 meow. Okay. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, doomed. Meow, 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 meow. Anybody get that one? <laughs> Should give more than one word? Okay. Uh, here we go. Uh, meow, 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 meow. Are doomed. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, The structure is pretty oh, evident in that gosh. one. Sky Gear, you don't, don't be complaining it? about that one. Nobody's gotten it yet. I'll do it one more time. 
Desert INTJ got it. Those who don't, those who for yes, those who forget about history are doomed to repeat it. <gasps> that is such a good one. <laughs> Let's try another one. Um, Meow, 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 meow. We don't, meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. We don't, meow, 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 meow. Is that a holiday one? No. Stop. It's, oh my God. No. I can well, sing it. Ray, Rachel got the fact that it's a holiday one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is yeah, a fun yeah, game, yeah, kind yeah. of. Yeah, it's a. Meow, 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 meow. We all meow, 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 meow. Have a Merry Christmas. Mm hmm. <gasps> Refrigerator! Oh! If, if, the, if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's no. Oh, okay. But uh, no, I must have heard it though before to guess that it was a holiday one. I must have. How about this? Mm. I, I really, I probably my grandma office again. She loved those kind of phrases. How about this? Uh, meow, 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 All the meow, 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 meow. Stop. Oh, wait, wait. Um, um, April, June, and September? All have, wait. April, June. How does it start though, Rachel? Say, can you meow meow? Mm hmm. Meow meow meow, meow meow meow, meow meow meow, meow meow meow, meow meow meow. All the meow 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 meow. Fuck. You're pretty good at this, Rachel. Thank you. That's pretty modern. Come on. That A lot of people know this one. Yeah, it starts with 30 days. 30 days has September, September, April, June, and November. All the rest of 31 except for February. February right. <laughs> <laughs> except February is an interesting one. How does a claim become justified and properly validated? Well, it's important to remember that claims offer warrants as justification. Those warrants are then subject to scrutiny. How well those warrants uh, so withstand scrutiny depends on the nature and strength of the warrant. And there are two different kinds of claims, those that make binary claims and those that make uh, what you call sliding scale claims. So the mechanics for validating each of those kind of claims are different and relate back to the framework of each of the parties making the arguments. Well said. Thank you. Uh, I think that's a great suggestion, Sky Gear. I think I like that a lot. I think it works well. So, to clarify a little further for you, Dave Sanderson, if um, if I'm making a claim that something is morally prohibited, it's a black and white claim. Now, you're going to hear people attack that claim on a few grounds. Most people who aren't very good at arguing will say something along the lines of, there are no black and white claims, or um, that kind of, of moral absolutism is fundamentally wrong. A more case level approach could be to say, um, I agree with your framework that allows for things to be morally prohibited, but I don't agree that in this instance, it's morally prohibited. So that's a different approach to the critique, right? Or 
you could say I agree with the the principle of moral prohibition because I think this class of action is exempt from it. So another kind of approach to rebutting it. That's the most common kind of approach in current debate, by the way. People will say utilitarianism is uniquely acceptable for public policy because the unique qualities of public policy. That's the current winning argument on framework that's running most LD rounds. So most people run a, a util framework. And the reason why they run a util framework is because if you run a deontological framework of some sort, any kind of rights-based framework, you can't really impact on uh, impacts under your own framework. You can you always have to remember to impact your, your the impacts under your opponent's framework. Now this, in my opinion, gives you ultimately an advantage, but it's harder to do, and so most students don't end up taking that approach. They just go straight to tell to avoid the issue. So then the answer would be, of course, it, how do you validate a given claim in that situation? Is uh, you, you check the frameworks, and I mean, there's actually an ordinal step of operations here that I've articulated out in a document. You check the frameworks first. If it's the same framework, then you weigh the impacts under that framework of each side and see whose impacts outweigh. Depending on the kind of framework, those impacts may be binary or sliding scale. If they have different frameworks, then you check to see um, who made the stronger prefer my framework arguments. And if one person clearly won the prefer my framework argument, then you evaluate the round under that framework. So it's possible in theory to win framework and lose the round if your opponent successfully uh, impacts under your framework better than you do. But typically that won't happen because your case is structured to impact under your own framework. So um, if, in, if, however, it's a complete wash on the prefer my framework battle, and it's not clear which framework you should uh, you should impact under, then you impact under the broad utilitarian-ish framework of cost-benefit analysis, which is just like utilitarianism, except it considers rights slightly differently than util does. In other words, it considers rights a kind of impact um, that should- That looks so funny to me. <laughs> hey, camera. And that potentially- <laughs> It doesn't- it doesn't like to focus. No, it doesn't. Right it really doesn't. I have to focus for Sam to move for it. So the question then of, well, how do you validate or invalidate claims in the abstract is, is a, it's a problem question because those arguments never occur in the abstract. In other words, there's some, reason and some context in which a given claim is being made and you've got to engage that, that context in that claim. I mean, you got to engage that claim in that context. Frog. Be cool. It has, it, does it have a frog on it? No, but uh -oh. it's because we're, it's called Rebe and the the mascot is the frogs. That We are the Rebe frog, fighting frogs. Yeah. Is what the mascot is called. It's raining right now, by the way. I don't know how exciting that is for all of you to hear. It's exciting for me. It's I, exciting for me, too. I put a post on Instagram about it. Yeah, they are the fighting frogs. So, you Trimmer, you are on to something. Octavio, Octavio Silva asked you to define NI. Did you answer that question? Um, no, but I will. It's, it's uh, some people call it pattern recognition. Uh, I would say it's identity, identity recognition. So, in other words, it's, it's knowledge via identity rather than experience. Knowing what something is externally or in and of itself rather than knowing how it links to you. And where it is in the stack depends on how, and if it's in the second slot, like I was saying, NI DOMs have both. They're, they're, they don't, they know when not to use NI, at least have the capacity to know when not to use NI and when to use SI instead. 
And whereas like NI tool users tend to go overboard with their NI, just as I tend to go overboard with my TI. Can you give an example of this identity recognition? Well, I mean, an easy one is Rachel looking for confirmation of our of our relationships, success in externals like uh, astrology, numerology, and things like that. She wants so to much. understand why the relationship is successful, not experientially, not because <laughs> she's had a lot of good experiences, it is. but instead it's because bad. of some identity that it has that makes it explicable to her on an NI level. She <laughs> prefers to know things on an NI level, so... Even though she, even though this is not necessarily an appropriate context to use NI because she has so much yeah. SI data, yeah, um, she's gonna still want to have it explained by an NI. It makes me happy, like, uh... and, and whereas I'll tend to say things like, Well, Rachel, but you have all this SI data in front of you, why would you choose to I always... evaluate things by an NI? But see, <laughs> that's where, like. I feel we have a healthy relationship because I take that into consideration now. So when I get shitty readings, yes, sometimes it makes me cry because it just, that's the, that's my trigger. Um, but I always keep in mind, like a doy Rachel, uh, you're in the same fucking room with him. Like you see him every single day. Like he tells you how he feels, you know, better. Yes. Octavia Silva linking things you've encountered in the past together as examples of the same kind of thing is an example. And I, so when I say, uh, uh, the, the lead character from black Clover and Naruto, and the lead guy from High Hi, uh, Q are all the same character, basically, Sorry. more or less. When I make that claim, as I do periodically, I am saying they are all representative of the same pattern. They're they're literally not actually the same character, obviously, right? You know, it's like each of them, one of them is empowered with anti magic and carries around a giant sword. One of them is uh, a ninja who has jutsu that he uses. And one of them plays volleyball. They're not the same character, but they're the same in terms of the fact that they have, they're represented in the same universal pattern, which is the healthy ESFP manifesting their ESFP hood yeah. in an appropriate context to good effect for everybody. Yep. And it's a nice show. It's a nice sort of narrative for people to enjoy watching because you get to see people who are doing what you can never seem to do which is pick a singular course of action and apply yourself to it consistently across time to achieve great results. <laughs> it's a great, great challenge of all humanity, right? Yeah. Pick a single course of action and apply yourself to it consistently for the purpose of obtaining great results. <laughs> Requires too many different things for anybody to really pull it off. So we tell stories about people who do. That'd be a good highlight right there, you know. Yeah, nice really yes. <sighs> <laughs> did I tell you about how I did? I had to have how V, my ESFP roommate, she was like um, a calendar girl, and she gave me a calendar and she made me like hang her up in my room. So that I could be like, yeah, that's my roommate. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you put it up, right? I was like, yes, B. <laughs> so I've been watching a lot of a lot of new anime. Rachel and I have both been checking out some new stuff. We we started watching So I'm a Spider, So What? Personally, I love So I'm a Spider, So What? I'm three episodes into you it. You waited all... for the last one, right? Where... There's only together. yeah we've only yeah, seen, we've yeah. seen all three of the episodes that there are. I think it's so cute. If you haven't started, so I'm a spider. So what? Uh, could an NI test be name three movies you've seen that are similar and explain how they're similar to each other? Yeah, that might be a a good a good way to test yeah. NI. Yeah. I mean, I have to I have to ask some. I'm assuming everybody would be able to do some level of that in I like go well uh yes even my brother 
My brother is I mean, a movie. And I tool. So he'd be able to do it. Yeah, he would easily. be. But yeah. I'm saying like, I'm that, sure my dad would be able to name three war movies and say, well, these are three war movies. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, well, he was able to tell you his favorite, right? He told you Ghostbusters, Beetlejuice, and Groundhog's Brown Day. Day. My dad's three favorite movies. Interesting three favorite movies, huh? Isn't it? On the FCJ? Yes. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, that's probably the case, Lee Trimmer. Um, might it be possible that demonstrative and role functions appear to misconstrue someone's type on first appearance? I think, uh, Lexion Trio, that it certainly is conceivable that if you're not doing the proper kinds of assessment, that you can mistake demonstrative for front stack, and that uh, the eighth slot, it really depends on what... What function you have in the eighth? So it's uh, some functions are a lot easier to test than others because they're basically processes executed by an agent either willfully or automatically on various stimuli in various fields. So, you know, it's like um, SE8, which I am, is somewhat harder to, to note. I guess you'd say, uh, because there's not really, at least I don't currently have an effective explicit test for it that I can do in a testing session. Wait, Octavia Silva, what do you mean avoid Reddit? Are they talking about Eric? No, I think he, she's saying if you want answers to things, avoid Reddit. Oh, yeah, definitely avoid Reddit. Actually, some of that no, stuff don't worry about it, Sky Gear. If you're repeating yourself, it's because I didn't see it the first time. It's fine. Some of the stuff there is accurate, though. There was this ESFJ girl who was like in a relationship with an ENTP, and it really like read out to me. And like, she was I, like, I don't know, like, it made me happy. All right, like, the I girl mean, was definitely ESFJ, and she was definitely in a relationship with an ENTP, and it made me realize, like. Yeah, I appreciate that about him. You don't, like, you think you're using your intuition, honey, but you're not. I mean, that would take some prep work to find that sentence, Sky Gear. Um, though, you'd have to, what you're saying there presumes that, that those, such sentences are easy to find. I mean... In some sense, I think what Sky Gear just said is an exemplary of second second slot any, of not understanding the limitations of any. Um, okay, I, I'm about ready to wrap this up, I think. Sure. It's been an hour and 23 minutes. Yeah. And um, thanks for being here. I'm glad I was able to chat with everybody. It's been pleasant. Me too. It was nice. It was a nice surprise, actually, I have to say. Don't forget to eat 